Okay, let's take a look at another way to balance trees. And these are called red-black trees. Red-black trees are a way of keeping a tree always balanced. And the idea is that you label every node as either red or black. I'm not going to use red or black because I don't have red and black markers. But you'll see what I mean. And in fact, of course, when we write code, we don't label them red and black. We have a Boolean value that we set to either true or false to note whether something is red or black. But we label every node as red or black. And then every time we add something to the tree, we check our tree against a set of rules. And depending on the violation, we do either a color flip or a rotation to correct the issues with our tree. So let's take a look, at, first of all, at the rules that we have to follow. And there are six of them that we need to know. The first is that every node is either red or black. There's no alternative. You can either be red or you can be black. Next, the root is always black. And if the root is not black, we make it black. We force it to be black. New insertions are always red. We always start with insertions that are red. If we insert something as the root node, we insert it as red, but we immediately make it black. Every path from root to leaf, so every possible path that we can take through our tree has the same number of black, black nodes. No path can have two consecutive red nodes. And finally, any null node is considered to be black. So two things to notice here. Every path from root to leaf has the same number of black nodes. That means that a path or different paths from root to leaf can have different numbers of red nodes. That's OK. It's specifically black nodes. And no path can have two consecutive red nodes. But a path can have two consecutive black nodes. That's also OK. So these are our six rules. Remember them. If I set you an exam question about red-black trees, which is quite likely, I often ask you a question, which what are the six rules? People often forget every node is red or black, or that nulls are black. But these are the six rules for red-black trees. Every time we add to our red-black trees, we come back to these rules, we take a look at them, and we ask, our, do our um, trees violate these rules? What happens if our tree violates these rules? Well, we have to fix the tree. Let's take a look at how we do that fix.
There's two more rules for fixing the tree. So we need to rebalance based on whether if we have a black ant, we rotate. Black ant, we rotate. If we have a red ant, we color flip. So I don't have black and red, so I'm going to use alternate colors. I'm going to use red for red, and I'm going to use blue for black, okay? So after we do either a rotation or a color flip, after that, we then need to resolve the colors on the tree. And you'll see what I mean by this when I go through an example. But the rule is that after a rotation, the three nodes that we're working on end up as black, red, red. Okay, so the parent is black and the two children are red. In contrast, after a color flip, the three nodes that we're working on, the parent ends up red and the children end up as black. It doesn't matter what color the edges are. Okay, this is complex and we'll go through an example which I hope will clarify it. But you need to remember that if you have a black ant, you rotate, and if you have a red ant, you color flip. After a rotation, we set the color of the nodes so the parent is black and the children are red. And after a color flip, or as a color flip, all we do is we set the parent to be red and the two children to be black. 